All right, it's just a, um, a quick note about strip scars and, and what can happen. Um, this is a patient who had his first hair transplant in 1994. And in 1994, you know, it was possible for patients to get, uh, to get natural appearing hair transplant, but the vast majority of physicians uh, we're not on board with flicker unit transplant surgery in 1994. Obviously, if he'd come to me in 1994, he would have gotten flicker units. And um, um, he wouldn't still be trying to repair his hair transplants. Well, he, he got his first hair transplant and they, and they transferred mini grafts and gave him this plug-in natural look. And so he was disappointed with that, and he, he waited until roughly 1999. And then he, he decided to go to a physician who's recommended by a number of consumer advocates, and his whole objective was to repair his hair transplant. Well, what he wound up with was a, a very slight improvement in his hair transplant, but his original fine strip scar uh, from the initial procedure uh, turned into this. And that's the point. That's the point. You can do your first strip and wind up with a perfectly natural strip incision. You know, very thin incision. But then you do the second. And you may again get a fine incision, strip scar. But then again, you may start to widen. And he may do a third strip and a fourth strip and, and maybe on the second, maybe on the third, maybe on the fourth, this is what you get. And the strip scar begins to widen. And not only does it widen, you get these little white scars up into these areas. That's where the sutures were placed. It's uh, probably where hair has been killed for some reason. And... Um, they do tension on the, on, the, on the incision from the scars to keep it together so they get enough hair out to transfer to the top and also uh, overcome the width the scar that was there and the tension in the donor area from multiple strip incisions. Well, the other thing that tends to happen is, you know, hair grows in a natural uh, angle down like this. And so if you have hair at this angle, a lot of times you have hair down here at this angle and it's different. You marry two different angles of hair growth and then this hair below tends to get pulled up and this hair gets pulled down and so you have all these different angles. But you know, you can do the first strip, get a perfect scar. Second strip, maybe you get this, maybe it's the third or the fourth strip. So at any rate, here's a patient that went to a highly recommended physician for one reason. That was to make his hair transplant look more natural. Well. He didn't get the most optimal result in the recipient area because what needed to happen was to remove a lot of the big grafts. But what he also wound up with was this, this horrible strip scar. And that's, that's literally why I started to move away from strip procedures in 2002. You know, because we couldn't predict who was going to get this strip scar and we couldn't predict when it would happen. You know, it might be on the second surgery, it might be the third surgery, it might be the first surgery. You never knew, and that's why I started to move away. Now, just like the transition from plugs and mini grafts, which began in the late 80s, you know, with FUE, uh, most physicians in 2002 thought we were crazy when we started doing FUE. You know, well, we don't need to do that because we got this wonderful strip procedure that produces a lot of hair. We get good results with it, and... Who cares about these strip scars? They're covered. You know, you got hair above them. They're covered. They're concealed. Well, yeah, they're concealed as long as you don't go in the swimming pool. You don't, uh, you know, get out on a windy day. Uh, you don't take too much of the surrounding hair. Uh, but come on. Eventually, those scars have a tendency to become exposed. So in 2002, I started to move away from it. Well, just like it took 10 years for most physicians to move from plugs and mini grafts, to follicular unit transplant surgery, it's taking about 10 years for most physicians to move from strip surgery to follicular unit extraction. And that's basically what we have. In 2002, when I moved to FUE, physicians thought we were crazy. Well, now 35% of 
of all surgeries are done by way of FUE. And the number is going up. It's not going down, it's going up. So the point is when, when you do strips, you have this uh, propensity to create this scar, and then you're gonna need to, to waste grafts unnecessarily put into the scar so that you can take more of the surrounding hair and put it in to resolve this individual's predicament, which is an unnatural looking hair transplant. So my philosophy is very simple. If you need a small number of grafts, consider a strip. But if you're going to a Norwood 5 or a Norwood 6 or even a Norwood 3 Vertex, you're going to need more hair. And if you need more hair, you want to avoid this. Because if you need more hair, you're the guy that needs more than one strip. You're the guy that might need three or four strips. And you're the guy that might get this. And if you get this, then you can take fewer of these to help conceal problems up top. So if you need more hair, for God's sake, say no to strips. Get, get it. Go to FUE straight up. Because if you, if, if, for example, I don't have to worry about concealing this strip scar and wasting grafts into the strip scar, I can take a whole lot more of these hairs and move them to the top from the get-go. And I can take a whole lot more out of that donor area because a thin, overall thin donor area is going to look more natural seven days a week, 365 days a year, than a donor area that has this horrible looking, hypopigmented, irregularly shaped, obviously unnatural strip scar on the back of your head. So say no to strip if you need a big surgery. That's, that's highly my recommendation based on having done now thousands and thousands of FUE cases and repaired thousands of these horrible looking strip scars um, by either revising them first or having to waste grafts unnecessarily in them.